Secrets to maintaining a sense of play. A recipe for play. Over here, kitty. Welcome to our playground. Does this classroom sound like a place of fun? It should be. But why? Is it because of the absence of work? Pause there for a second, kitty. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Work requires mental and physical effort in order to achieve a result. And that happens in the playground too. It can't simply be a state of no work. I think you know where I'm going with this. The reason why a playground is a fun space isn't because there is no work happening. It's fun because in a true playground, there is no supervisor. That's our playground, kitty. It's a real space, but it's your space. A corner in your room, a room in the house, or some place outside your house. If you can stand on it and make a mess in it, that's your playground. But it's a precious space that needs to be kept alive. Being able to make a mess is important, but equally important is to clean up afterwards. This will keep us coming back. In this lesson, we'll list the three main ingredients for playtime at Cat's Art School. First ingredient, energy. Can't do anything without it. Sounds obvious, but a lot of people have just enough energy for paid work and responsibilities. Playtime is a luxury, just for kids, or the sort of thing you have to do if you have kids. Obligatory, oh no, no. Time for the good news. Here's the secret to stable energy. Quality of food. Not quantity, not frequency. Quality. Now, I'm not going to advise you on what to eat in particular, because I'm only an expert in my own body. Only I can tell which real foods agree with me. You have to figure out the real foods that agree with you. I like how Scott Adams refers to our bodies as moist robots. Indeed, we are programmable through biochemistry. If we fix that according to our individual needs, we'll have no problem getting a sense of playtime. Because the food is so satiating, we have several hours in between meals to actually do stuff, make stuff, be playful. When your animal body is in a good place metabolically, it will seek playtime without any help from free will. It's automatic. Now the second ingredient. Touch. It's the underrated sensory input. We are mostly seeking to see and hear, wouldn't you agree, kitty? We don't eat for the most part of the day. Instead, we indulge our eyes and ears, watching and observing, reading and listening. At least to us city folks, we seem to be deficient in indulging our sense for the tactile. Imagine our touchscreen devices showing no visual or sound cues. It would be a boring object to keep holding. You realize there is no useful tactile information coming from it. It's designed especially for visual and auditory input. We use our sense of touch to move things around and get things done but not so much for its enjoyment. They say that vocal and visual signals become less important as tactile signals intensify. Let's take a hint from the second syllable in playground. The more I indulge in tactile things, the less I mull over about what I saw and heard. The effect is grounding. I am sucked into what's present and the nature of objects reminds me that I can't control everything. Sounds obvious, but just observe how many people go about thinking they can. And surprise, surprise, who's cranky when things don't go their way? In our playground, we use our hands so we can take a break from living inside our heads. We want that cure to word thinking and overthinking, which is a recipe for anxiety and inaction. When I balance my sensory indulgences and give a little more to my sense of touch, I begin to have less expectations, less excuses. Consequently, I'm more open to try something new. Let's talk about chalk pastels. I had no interest in them in the past because they're dusty and messy, and I knew I would suck at it. 
After two years of playtime sketches using water-soluble graphite, nothing's changed with chalk pastels. They are still dusty and messy, and I'm still sure to suck at it. But only if I stop soon after one try. It feels different now, focusing on things that I can control. I feel less inhibited. This is the real reason why a playground is fun. In it, we have the freedom to fail. Now let's take a look at the third ingredient: repurpose. This can be a trade secret, no more. I have for maintaining a sense of play. I have a habit of hitting multiple birds with a boomerang because stones don't come back. Listen, Kitty, here's what I mean: when I experiment with a sketch or a new medium. I do it to surprise and entertain myself. It's inherently enjoyable, even with all the sketch fails. The process is the reward. It gives me happy hands. But then something happens afterwards. Something automatic. The illustration starts to make sense. It ties in with an idea I have floating in my head. This is backwards to some artists. Some artists start off with a message and then they illustrate it, which is more of a rationalizing process than a playful activity. My process is the other way around. I start off with an image, and then I make sense of it in words. When this happens, the sketch I made now has a new purpose. It's got a story to tell, and I pursue it until it grows enough to be digestible by someone else other than myself. The sketch is now meaningful and acquires a new purpose. It could be for a new entry in my Sunday sketch diary that I share with friends, or a new short story comic book that I share with the world, or it could be a part of a postal note, a handwritten letter for someone dear. You see, our starting point is the playground. Incentive comes from our personal enjoyment. In the beginning. There are no considerations for anything or anyone else. We're just playing around with images for the sake of it. It's a physical bubble with a back door open to hidden influences. After which, it turns into irresistible detective work. We can't help but try to make sense of what we see. Once solved, our playtime sketch starts to add meaning to our playful efforts, and this is the moment. When the boomerang returns to our grip, it's rewarding. It feels good. You want to do it over and over again. You've seen my works at permanentthirdgrade.com. I play with several sketches. I call them Sunday sketches, and I've repurposed them over time. The culmination of this system led me to create this website, catsartschool.com. Permanent third grade is a platform for visual storytelling experiments, and Cat's Art School is where I reveal the methods behind the experiments. It's going to be revelatory, Kitty. We start from the ground up, thinking in pictures first before anything. I hope you enjoy this opening day to our playground. The ground is set. Now go play. See you next lesson.